It's related to this property of exponents that says that b to the x to the y power is b to the x times y. So if I've got an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply the two exponents. Here's the properties of logs that will match up with that. If I have log base a of m to the k, it's equal to, you can bring the k down in front, k times log base a of m. k is an exponent and the log is an exponent. You're taking the product of two exponents. That's why it matches up with this guy, b to the x to the y power is b to the x times y. It's the product of two exponents because the log is an exponent. I know it's the hardest thing, and I over and over again when I was a student, the logarithm's an exponent, the logarithm's an exponent, and it's like it just went over my head until I finally had to teach it and had to work with it. Then suddenly it made sense. Okay, so the only thing you do is move that k. And that's how, and that's equation solving. It's going to be a big thing with equation solving. That's how you get your grubby hands on the exponent, by the way. Is using that property. So if I have log base a of 9 to the negative 5, I just bring the negative 5 down in front. It's negative 5 log base a of 9. If I have log base a of the 4 through to 5, remember like we had to on Friday, we had to write it as a fractional exponent. This is 5 to the 1 fourth power. Now you can bring the 1 fourth down in front. It's 1 fourth log base a of 5. So if I have log base 9 of x to the 7th, bring the exponent down in front, it's 7 log base 9 of x. And if I had the 7th root, and by the way, uh, this is the one that I really did need to change. I realized that after I, I prepped the dang thing. And it's this symbol right here. This is natural log. Which is really log base E. Log base E is natural log. That's on your calculator, by the way. That doesn't come up until a later section. So I should have changed the logs on these two, so it was my bad. But it is, it's a log base E. So treat it as just any other log. So natural log of x to the 1 7th turns into 1 7th natural log of x. Now in combination, here's your argument. So when I look at this guy, this is log base b of x times y cubed. That y cubed has nothing to do with that x because this is x is really to the one power. Paul, can I get you the... Thank you. So a product turns into a sum. So log base b of x plus log base b of y cubed. This is to the 1 power, so that's done. And then here, it's got an exponent. I can bring it down in front. So this is 3 log base b of y. Now you find the further along you go, the more you go from this notation to this because it makes the problem simpler to work with. Log base b of y is easier to work with than log base b of y cubed. <laughs> this guy is that this whole thing is square rooted. So this is the natural log and x and y are under the radical. So the whole thing is to the one half power. I know I need to move that over. I wanted to make sure everybody had the other stuff down. So now I just have to bring this down in front because 
in that set of parentheses, X and Y are captured. Now this is where you have to be very careful of detail because this is a product, but one half is going to multiply this whole thing when I expand it and expands into two pieces. Now, if you want to multiply through by the one half, you can, or you can <coughs> leave it alone. So I would put an or on this. The other answer would be one half natural log x plus one half natural log y. And again, it's going to depend upon what you're going to do with it as to which one would be more convenient. Sometimes in calculus, I know this one's much more convenient than certainly this one because it enables me to handle the two terms separately. They're separate entities. Once I get them separated, it makes them easier to work with.